running all over town. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> cow. It's not a moose, it's on the loose, and we might have to put it down. It's a cow, it's a cow, it's a cow, cow. 7.43. On the Talk of the Town with Dave, Jay, and Sam. The cow is a menace to society here in the Mohawk Valley, and it must be stopped. Scott McNamara is in, the district attorney. And, uh, Scott, are we going to catch this thing finally or what? Uh, hopefully. Yeah, I know the New Hartford <laughs> police have set up a trap for it now. <laughs> yes, they have. <laughs> yes. Uh, we've been dealing with this. I think this is the second cow. They had an, another cow incident back in May wandering through Utica, right? right. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, they did. Yeah, yeah. and Scott. they caught that one, I think, right? Yeah, I think I think it's a different cow. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> it matter. It's one cow that likes to get out a lot. No <laughs> plans on bringing charges to the cow, do you, Scott? No, we don't Lutinous so. or no. anything like that. Okay. What I find interesting, and you grew up on a farm, Scott, I know that, yep. out in Deansboro there. Nobody has claimed this cow yet, which is interesting to me. That is interesting. Um, so that makes you wonder where the cow did come from, like that the farmer doesn't know it's missing. So Right, exactly. You'd think if you lost a cow these are valuable livestock somebody would come forward at this point right usually they do yeah. <laughs> and some guy has come forward and actually said well, i'll take it nobody else wants it could, could we throw our names in the ring there too and like sure. uh, and is, there, is, is there like a cow lottery at that point what, what, what came first? the cow or the milk That's right. came first. Uh, interesting situation uh other news to talk about in uh, oneida county the uh the murders are down this summer it's the third summer in the last decade where that's been the case no murders at all it's uh, good news for the area it is knock on wood we've been fortunate uh, we've had you know quite a few shootings unfortunately but fortunately those shootings haven't resulted in people dying so um um, you know, it's it's a it's a good thing. It's a very good thing, and there's a lot of people to to give credit to for that. Um, the state we work very hard with the state under the Give program to address gun violence. Mm-hmm. Um, the Utica Police Department has a specialized um, individual who helps work on that grant. Um, we have somebody that works in the D- we actually have two people working at DA's office, an outreach person and a specialized prosecutor, and um, and I think. A lot of it has to do with um, the community. I mean, there's a lot of community leaders. There's a lot of people in the community that are doing a lot of things to try to stop the violence. And and honestly, I've said many times, and and I, you know, I really believe this. You know, the DA and the chief of the police, we can't stop crime. The the community stops crime. The community and um, you know, basically what they decide. Um, th- is important. They can spread throughout the community. They can spread throughout their churches and um, in any social places that people gather. And, you know, you can kind of put pressure on the, the younger people who are traditionally the people shooting each other, unfortunately. And, um, you know, and, and really try to put the pressure on them to put down the guns and solve your problems without killing each other. I think you mentioned, uh, you know, you can't stop crime. You know, that's right. gonna, it's a tough thing. But um, I it, just my overall opinion, I feel that it has been concentrated at least uh, in, in those targeted areas. It hasn't uh, over the past 10 years, and something that I wanted to bring up with uh, the police chief when we had him in last week, but you, you, I, I feel like you get the sense of, of a little bit uh, more safety when you go through the community, and it seems like it is really kind of concentrated in those target areas. Yeah, one of the the bigger approaches that we're trying now that we didn't used to try, like I've been in the DA's office for over 23 years, and uh, when I first started, basically what would happen is the police would, if somebody got killed, the police would investigate it, and then we would prosecute it. Um, we still do that, but what we do differently now is we identify the people that are involved. And a lot of times we can identify someone that's been involved in two, three shootings. And unfortunately, a lot of times we don't get any help from the people that get shot. Mm-hmm. You know, they say, I don't know, or they just lie to us, or they mm-hmm. just won't cooperate. Majority of the time. Right. So what we do is once we can identify who the perpetrator is, we put a lot of pressure on that individual by other means. Um, so, you know, a lot of times the only crime that they're, the crimes that they are committing are not just limited to shooting at somebody. Sure. They're obviously, they have an illegal handgun. Um, and there's a lot of other crimes that they're committing. So what we do is we concentrate now on hot people and hot spots. So if we know a certain house 
has a lot of violence coming out of it, that house gets a lot of, a lot of attention. If we know a certain individual is um, responsible for a lot of um, crime and a lot of shootings, um, we concentrate on that individual. And we re basically, we don't plea bargain with the individual. And that includes from a traffic ticket all the way up to whatever their <laughs> charges are. And we have really put a lot of emphasis on... Um, directing our attention towards um, gun violence and putting the people that are committing the gun violence away f and giving them substantial prison sentences. Because the only way we're going to keep the community safe is to keep the dangerous people off the streets. And so that's really what we've been concentrating on. And, you know, and hopefully, you know, that's helping. But, you know, we're always one, you know, bad person away from coming, al coming along that just start shooting people. And, sure. You know, so that's why we need the community's help. And we need, yeah, it's, it's a joint effort, everybody. Talking to Oneida County DA Scott McNamara on the Talk of the Town, 100.7 FM WUTQ. It's also National Emergency Preparedness Day today. You might have heard earlier we had the guest on from the OCGov.net there in the health department. Uh, do you two uh, work together on this type of thing on a day like today or not so much? No, not really. I know Phyllis. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a great person. I've known her for quite some time. I know her husband. Um uh, no, we don't work on that. I mean, I am kept in the loop um, with, uh, well, for example, 911 has a lot to do with mm -hmm. notifying everybody, um, law enforcement, so I'm in the loop on that. And we talked to Kevin Revere a couple times, Kevin, a fascinating exactly. guy. Uh, <laughs> he's a, yeah, he's quite he's an operation. Yeah. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. so, he's a friend of mine, too. Mm -hmm. I've known Kevin for a long time, too. Mm -hmm. And if he ever leaves uh, the county, he's going to become one of our radio hosts here with his deep voice. <laughs> yes, yes, he does. He does want to do that, voice. and he's a Chiefs fan. He might want to turn <laughs> in that <laughs> Kansas City football team, too. <laughs> yes, he is a Chiefs fan. <laughs> and uh, Scott uh, McNamara, United County District Attorney, you mentioned uh, being uh, in the DA's office for 23 years. Um, so you've been instrumental and you've seen, um, you know, the case come through your desk and worked uh, dig diligently on it. Uh, the Kim Simons murder, it's been uh, 30 years. And uh, in 2008, Steve Barnes exonerated. Um, I don't even know how to start off. Uh, your thoughts, your ideas, the background maybe of what you've seen uh, from this case? Sure. Um it's a tough case. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's been a tough case since day one. And although I wasn't there when when Kimberly was was murdered, um, you know, it was one of those cases that you know rocked the community. I mean, she's such a shocking case. Um, she was a young, attractive high school student, and then what happened to her just really shocked the whole community. And um, so, you know, it's from day one, it's been a terrible case. And then obviously the wrongful conviction just makes it even, you know, worse if it's even possible. Um, and then, you know, after the wrongful conviction, we, um, I had put together a team of people that worked for me. Um, the chief of police at, um, in Utica loaned me an individual, as did the chief in, in Rome, uh, which I couldn't have done it without it. I mean, I don't have a staff of investigators like that. So they loaned me people. So we had a team work on it w well over a year, just going back. Because when it first broke, we did have a lot of leads. Mm -hmm. We were getting, you know, leads every day. And um, we followed up all those leads. And honestly, the, um, the people that were loaned to me stayed with us until basically we had all the loan or the leads um basically followed up um today i mean we still follow up leads i have an investigator who's assigned to the case um to this day um and he comes in and talks to me periodically about different things that, have, that will develop um usually what happens is somebody gets arrested in, or somebody has some sort of contact with the police and says well i have information on kim simons so we have to go interview that people then sometimes like recently we just had somebody call up and say, you know, so-and-so lived in the neighborhood or in the community then, and they were weird. Mm -hmm. And we still have to follow those up mm -hmm. because you just can't leave those out there, even though a lot of 99% of the time those leads don't go anyplace. And this but. is in a community that normally doesn't see uh, something like this happen Exactly. As well. So, I mean, it, right now we have, um, you know, we've done an incredible amount of work on it. Um, you know, I, I believe... Um, personally that there are people that that and some of those people I have one in particular I've personally spoken to and tried to interview her and I believe that um her and another individual she was with that night have information and could tell us um 
you know, and could fill in a lot of the blanks on what happened to Kimberly that night. I also believe that there was a party where a lot of individuals were at that night that they have information. Near the tracks. Uh, no, actually, I differ a little bit okay. with that. I mean, there was a party at a house on, um, I think it's Henderson, or whatever street it is that goes from Hearts Hill, oh, Middle Settlement Road is the street. In Whitesboro. Yeah. Um, there was a party that night that the police were called to that a lot of the people that we believe have information we're at um so i believe there's information there but when we interview these people we constantly run into i don't know or i mean i've interviewed people that within the same interview have told me three different stories <laughs> and it's like really hmm. 30 I mean, years later is, you know, it, is it tough to is, i don't necessarily I, I mean i can understand that you know Clearly, being someone that, you know, actually I've worked on national committees on eyewitness identification, so probably, you know, because of working with the scientists and working with the, the social scientists that have studied it, I do appreciate probably more as much as anybody um, that people's memories do fade and that you might not remember everything. But to tell three stories or clearly cannot coincide with mm -hmm. each other i mean it's different between and pointed questions that yeah you, you know we're you know when you start asking things that the, the stories just don't make sense and um um you know and and that's what we're running into we're just running into people that um you know they're you know and many of these people i've personally interviewed myself you know just so i could have you know a, a working knowledge of what's going on with the investigation and um and it's you know obviously it's you know <laughs> It's annoying, obviously, because you want to solve the case. I mean, but it's probably the most disturbing thing is, and, and I try to get through to these people. What if you were Kimberly? Mm -hmm. What if you were Kimberly? A lot of these people now have children. Mm -hmm. What if you were Kimberly's mother and father? You know, you, you, you know, can't you find it in your heart to, to stop playing games with us, 